Hey guys, so I thought I would do a quick review using um, the medication labels that we talked about in the previous week. I thought I'd also incorporate that into our dosage calculations. Is that something that you would also see um, if you're using practice problems from your book or even on the homework? Um, it's just a matter of instead of being given the available supply or being given the you know dose on hand, Instead, you just have to find that on the medication label, so it's typically given to us. So let me show you what I mean by that. So using the label that we have there on the right, let's say that we receive an ordered dose. I'm just going to write order. Sorry, I'm using my finger here, so it's a little messy. Let's say we have an ordered dose of, say, 300 milligrams of clindamycin, the medication that we're looking at. Um, and we just need to know how many milliliters do we give. So how many milliliters are we going to give this particular patient? Well, again, in using the D over H times Q formula that we're used to using, remember D is the dosage that's been ordered, which is going to be that guy right there. That's going to be given to us here. And then H and Q are going to come from that label. Remember, H and Q are always listed together as that's the dose the, that we have on hand, some kind, sometimes called the supply dosage, uh, dosage strength, um, dose available. Again, we're looking at, uh, and why it's two things, the H and Q, again, is the dose on hand is the amount of medication per a particular quantity. Like in a tablet medication, it's so much medication per tablet. In a liquid medication like clindamycin that we're looking at here, it's per so many milliliters. So on, we go to look at that label, and clindamycin actually gives us two dosage strength. It's a little strange to, to see it, but I'm going to keep it in green here to show you. There's that, or there's that. Which one do we use? Doesn't matter. Either one, because, because what the, what's happening on this label, because there's a total of four milliliters in this particular vial, it's telling you what you know how much total medication is in that total four milliliters, but then they've reduced that down for us. They've actually simplified it a little bit further to say, oh, hey, that's the exact same thing as 150 milligrams per each single milliliter. So it's it's actually the same, 400 to four. If we were to set those up as a proportion, 600 is to four as 150 is to one, it's, there's, they're gonna be equivalent. Uh, so it doesn't matter which one you use, typically it's easier to use the smaller one. So in that example, I'm gonna say our order dose again was 300 milligrams. Our dose on hand is 150 milligrams per every one milliliter. So to, to solve this, we would take 300 divided by 150 Take that answer and times it by one, and that would be two. So our answer is going to be two milliliters. And just to, to show you that really it would be the exact same thing should you have, you know, if you chose to use the 600 and the four, let me show you what that would look like. Just for fun, let's do that. If we took 300 divided by 600, and again, I'm leaving those as is since they're both in milligrams. I'm not having to do any converting. But let's, let's see here. If we took 300 divided by 400, I mean, I'm sorry, 300 divided by 600, that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.5 because, again, that's half. 300 divided by 600 is half, 0 0.5. If we take that and then multiply by 4, 0 0.5 times 4 is also, well, if I could write here, 2 milliliters. So that's what I meant by on that particular label. doesn't matter which dosage strength they, that you use as they're both equivalent uh, to one another. So that's, that's what we're doing on these is that you're, given, you're going to be given an ordered dose. Again, it's just a matter of you having to pull that supply from the label then. Let's look at another example. Let's look at Lipitor here. So Lipitor, we can see, is our trade name of our medication, our brand name, and we can tell that. Again, remember that little registered symbol there tells us that Lipitor is our brand name, whereas the uh, atorvastatin calcium, sorry, I can't even pronounce that, there's our generic name. Not that that's important for our dosage calculation here. Uh, what we're looking at, since Lipitor is a tablet medication, 
Um, again, remember in all tablet and, cap and capsule medications, your dosage strength is always assumed to be per one. It's per each tablet. No matter you know, how many tablets our patient is going to have to take, this dosage that's on this label is how much is in, is in one tablet. So it's a little different. Again, we don't see 10 milligrams per tablet on the label because that's implied. We understand that that's, that's going to be true. That's going to be, um, you know, our quantity there. So our quantity with tablet medications is always going to be one. All right, so we already know. Oops, I didn't mean to delete that. Let's undo that. Sorry, I was just trying to get my little markings off of there. All right, so let's say for this one we have an ordered dose of perhaps 40 milligrams to take, uh, let's say, uh, every 12 hours. And we'll, we'll do something with that every 12 hours too just to, to make it fun here. And then again, the question is asking us then how much do we give or how many tablets are we going to give this patient? So what do we give this patient here? So using our D over H times Q formula, or, or let's say, I'm sorry, let me, let me be a little bit more specific with that give. Let's say we, we just say, what do we give uh, each in each dose? And I'll explain that. So using our D over H times Q formula, our order dose is 40 milligrams in a single dose, since that's what they're taking every 12 hours. And then according to our, our medic medication label up there at the top, every dose is 10 milligrams in each one tablet. Sorry, I'm running out of room there. So that means that our patient, when we take 40 divided by 10 times 1, that means our patient needs four tablets in each dose. Since, they're take since the order dose was 40 milligrams, for Lipitor, that's going to be four tablets in order for them to get that 40 milligrams in each dose. If the question had then been a little bit more specific, and that's something you want to really, you know, making, you know, make sure you're paying attention to, if the question was a little bit more specific, and instead of each dose, what if it said each day? You know, let's look if it said each day, and I'll write that in green to show that that's a little bit different than what we're used to seeing, so look out for that. So we still did our D over H times Q formula, 40 divided by 10 times 1, yes, is 4 tablets. However, that's again going to administer that 40 milligrams. So if a patient needs the 40 milligrams, they need to take 4 tablets of Lipitor. But our order says that they need to take that twice in a day. So a single dose is, is them just taking the 4 tablets. But a total in a day, if they're taking that every 12 hours, remember in a 24-hour day, every 12 hours is twice. So if they're taking four tablets twice a day, four tablets twice a day would be four times two. That means in a, in, in a single day, they would then take a total of eight tablets. So pay attention to those and those questions too. Make sure you're always uh, watching out for that end question to see if it's more specific about single dosages or daily doses. Um, and, and remember to use that, you know, abbreviation for every so many hours, you know, means that we have to see how many times a day that's going to be. Every 12 hours we see would be twice a day. That one might be a little bit easier. But if this was, say, um, let's say every, I don't know, every eight hours, every eight hours, and I'll just stick with me up in yellow up there at the top, if it was every eight hours, think about it, 24 hours, divided by eight hours would be three times total in a day. So we would end up to get the daily dose, we would multiply by three in that example, if that was the case. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're seeing those questions as well. Okay, we'll look at another tablet medication here with Xanax. Xanax is our brand name for this medication. And we see that it is another tablet medication. So let's say we have an ordered dose of I don't know, let's say six milligrams to take about every six hours. And we want to know how many tablets do we give in a day. Okay. So once again, we're following that D over H times Q formula. D says 
Six milligrams is our ordered dose. Dose on hand from that label is real big and bold right there is two milligrams. And again, because it is a tablet medication, we can see that there it is per each tablet. So when I take this and divide this out, six divided by two is three, multiplied by one is still three. So that would be three tablets is what they would need to take in order to get this dosage. So that's what they need in each dosage, but it says that they're taking that, you know, so again, they're taking the six milligrams every six hours, therefore they are taking three tablets every six hours. So that's what they're taking in a single dose. So if a person was to take three tablets, every six hours, that means they're gonna take that multiple times in a day. And that's what the question is asking us. What are we gonna give in a full day? So we again are gonna think about that. Let's think, in a 24 hour day, the question had said every six hours, so six hours, every six hours is gonna be four times in a single day. So if a person is to take three tablets every six hours, which we just determined was four times in a day, that means they're going to end up taking 12 tablets in a day. So the answer to that one, if the question had said, what do we give in a day, we need to, our answer there would be 12. Okay. All right. Example here on the last page looks like another liquid medication. So let's take a look at this one. So on this medication, let's say, and something else I want to make sure you guys are paying attention to in the dosage calculations uh, is if, again, we need to convert. A again, like if uh, D and H are not matching units, as we talked about in the lecture, we need to always make sure D and H are the same. So let's say uh, in this example we have an ordered dose of how about 0 0.4 milli or, I'm sorry, one, 0 0.4 grams uh, just to take daily. That's an I, daily. Um, and we want to know, you know, then how many milliliters do we give? How many milliliters do we give this patient? Well, let's think about this. So our D in this example is 0.4 grams, and we go to look in that label for H and Q, and we find our dosage strength right there, 200 milligrams per 5 milliliters. Remember from the lecture, if I were to go ahead and plug that in right now, if I were to go ahead and divide, I'm going to get this answer wrong. Because, remember, it's really important to make sure D and H are matching units. Right now, our units are grams up there on the top and milligrams down there at the bottom. So we need those to match. So this is where we're going to go back to our metric units, our metric conversion. So it's important to make sure we stay with our metrics. So... Um, doesn't matter which one of those you convert, you could choose to convert the 0.4 grams to milligrams so that it matches that bottom unit. Or you could do the alternative, the bottom one, you could convert that 200 milligrams into grams so that it matches the top. It doesn't matter either way. Um, I did mention that I'm in the habit of getting everything into milligrams just because it is the most common unit that you guys will see. So I'm going to convert that top dosage there I'm converting that doctor's order uh, to milligrams. And again, we're not changing it. We're just looking to see what that would be equivalent to in a different unit, milligrams, so that they match. So our metrics, we had two methods for converting metrics. One, you could remember that base to milli is moving our decimal three places to the right. So moving that three places to the right would be 400. Or for those of you guys that are using the stair step method, going from base to milli on the stair step method is times 1,000. If, if this sounds new to you guys and you're not familiar with this, go back and review metrics from week four. Um, that might be helpful to, to see that again, um, to see what I'm talking about. So again, for those of you guys who are using the stair step method, base to milli is times 1,000 because it's down one step, and 0.4 times 1,000 is 400. So no matter what, you still get 400. And that will then, then therefore make our units the same. So when I divide this out now, 400 divided by 200 is 2 times 5 is going to give us an answer of 10 milliliters is what's going to be needed for our patient to take of this erythromycin. 
All right, guys, so I just wanted to do that quick review with you guys to see if that uh, helps with those medication labels. And it's again, it's just a matter of pulling that dosage strength from the label. Typically, you can find that pretty big on the label. And again, if you need to go back and review your labels, we talked about those last week. So that lecture is still open for you if you need it. And as always, guys, you know, if you have any questions at all, just let me know.